What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we are doing a review on the Vupu Drag Mod. No, you know what? Scratch that. We are not going to do a review on the Vupu Drag Mod. Why? Because I tend to take a lot more time with the devices, and as you can tell, I'm already late to the party. So instead of doing a review on the Vupu Drag Mod by itself, let's do something I haven't seen yet, and that is, of course, a head to head video of the Vupu Drag Mod and the H Cigar VT167. Which one comes out on top? Stay tuned to find out. That is right, YouTube. Today we are doing a head-to-head, -head, not a review, a head-to-head -head comparison of the Drag by Vupu and the VT167 by H Cigar. Which one comes out on top? Well, I will answer that at the end of this video. So if you wanna fast forward to the end, you are more than welcome to, to find out who I think is the winner. But in the meantime, before we get to that decision, Let's talk about the breakdown of what I'm doing to compare these two mods and to determine ultimately who the winner will be. If you want to stick around for that, that's coming up right now. So we're going to kick things off with the actual software. Both of these do have a custom software with them. And one thing straight off the top I want to mention for both these softwares, which is a big con in my books, and yes, I'm being a little bit nitpicky here, but I don't like that both of them only operate on a Windows PC. So let's talk about the chips themselves and the actual water juice put out, because keep in mind, the Vupu Drag is listed at a 157, while the H Cigar is listed at a 167. But a 10 watt difference on paper, but does it actually measure up? And that's why I tested as well. I used a voltmeter to test these out, did the Ohm's Law calculation of what it's actually putting out in wattage, and I was surprised to find out that the Vupu Drag in super mode at 107 watts maxed out was actually putting out 192 watts based on a point 1 4 ohm coil, which I was using for both these tests, by the way, but it was putting out about 192 watts. The H Cigar, on the other hand, was much closer to its actual number, and it was putting out about 173 watts with that 0.14 ohm coil in there. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the Vupu is better because it puts out more wattage, or does it mean that the DNA is better because it was more accurate to its actual listed spec? And for that, I'm going to let you guys decide. Honestly, I think you can go either way in this one. I think it depends on your preference. Just be advised that the drag does tend to hit a little higher than what I expected to see based on the water I was giving out. Nothing is going to burn a coil necessarily unless you're maxing it out at 157. But even then, most people who are using 157 are already using coils that are well built beyond that and capable of handling more wattage than the max output. So at 192, I found it very good. But my personal preference zone was about 140 on both these devices. The, the DNA did seem to hit a little weaker at 140, so I would say the drag is probably hitting about 150 in that range instead, but I can't say exactly. I didn't do the volt test on that. I only did the volt test on the max wattage. So moving on from the volt test, let's talk about the actual hardware itself. Both these are zinc alloy construction. Both these seem to be constructed very well. Both of them use magnets on the battery door. As you can see, the DNA is a little bit different. It has a ball bearing on it as well, which may wear over time. But so far it's held up pretty good for me and of course the drag has some pretty powerful magnets on this which have not given me any issues they haven't come loose they've been stuck in there the whole time i found some devices that have magnets in it for the battery door it does tend to come out sometimes this one has stayed true so far by the way i've had the vupu drag for about a month now maybe a little bit more than that about five weeks and the dna of course the h cigar i've had for probably three or four months now haven't put a review on it so this is kind of my joint review of both of them i guess but it's more of a head-to-head. -head. And speaking of head-to-head, -head, of course, one thing that a lot of people are gonna be wondering is the price difference on these. And the price difference on the Vupu Drag, or the price on the Vupu Drag, I should say, is $60 US in that range, in between the 60 to 70 marks where I typically found it at. And for the VT167, which by the way, is a little bit of an older mod, doesn't mean it's worse, just means it's older, I was surprised to see it still listed around 85 to $100 US. Now, obviously, from a price perspective, the Vupu would win just based on the cost of it initially. However, having that DNA element to it right now, at least, still gives it a better resale value because they're still listed at a pretty high price. They have not dropped, despite the fact they've been out for quite a while now, it has not dropped that much in price despite its release last year in 2016. So what does that all mean? I mean, who's the winner in price? Again, it depends on personal preference. My personal preference isn't the resale value, it's the initial purchase price. And for that reason, I'm giving it to the drag. However, I can see why other people might give it to the DNA in that instance, because that resale value. 
As far as the size goes for each of these, I did find the Vupu was a little bit smaller, but it did have sharper edges. Now the edges felt more like an old Segeli, like the old Segeli 100 box mod, and it kind of felt a little bit clunky in the hand at first. But after I got used to it, is it a big deal? Not really. I didn't find it was really uncomfortable necessarily. It felt a little bit strange at first when you see these rounded mods, but the fact it went back to old school kind of gave me that nostalgia feeling almost, like I was holding my old Segeli 100 in my hand that just got a massive improvement on every level possible. But honestly, like I don't mind that the mod is a little bit more boxed out. Some of you might mind that. The VT167 on their hand has a much more comfortable grip to it. And of course, that leads me to the second part of the hardware, and that is the actual texture of the VT167. As you can see, it has almost like a fabric type texture to the actual grip around it, whereas the drag, rather than having any texture, although it may look that way, these are just stickers. And I'm a little disappointed they just use stickers, but if it helps get the cost down, I can't fault them for it. And on top of that, the stickers have held up very well, despite the fact I've used this quite a bit and haven't had any wear on the stickers, any peeling or anything like that. So both mods do get the benefit of the doubt for the hardware, but overall I do think that the Vupu Drag does have a much more durable build to it. However, a little bit lacking on the visual slash aesthetics of it. So I think both of them have their pros and cons in that aspect and I can't really give a winner either way. If you ask me, I would have loved to have seen a combination of the two as far as the hardware went and had that texture grip, a little bit softer with the fabric from the, from the VT167 and maybe less stickers like the drag. But again, from a cost perspective, I totally see where they're coming from. Before we get to battery life, there is one more thing I should mention that kind of seems to get the hype going for the Vupu drag. And that is the fact that it boasts a 0 0.025 second fire time or puff time according to them. Now, honestly, is that something I'm necessarily looking for in a mod? Not really. I hate to say it, but I kind of feel like that's a bit of a gimmick. And honestly, I had no way of testing down to the a hundredth of a second as far as which one fired faster. It, you know, it's, I'm not gonna lie, the drag did feel like it fired sooner than the VT-167, but once you fire it, honestly, it's not that much, or it's not really not noticeable to that extent. So for that reason, I'm not gonna give any extra points to the drag for having that. I think they're both equal in their firing capabilities. What I will say, however, is that, I don't know if you watched my Zenith review yet, I joined Maxo Zenith, but one thing I praised about the iJoy Maxo Zenith was the consistency of the hit. It didn't feel like it was lowering the wattage and raising the wattage and kind of pulsing it. It felt like a very consistent through hit the entire way through. And that is one thing I will say that the drag has, it's a very consistent hit. It doesn't feel like it's faltering. It's a very constant hit. Whereas the VT-167 has a slight variation from the duration of the puff, between about a three second puff or so, which is my average puff time. I would say I'm getting a little bit of a fluctuation where it might be noticeable if you're looking for it. If you're not looking for it, it does hit pretty constant as well. But for that reason, I have to give the drag a little bit of an edge because of that consistency on the hit. Lastly, it's time for the battery life. And this is a question that of course I saved till the end of the video, even though it's probably the most important on a lot of people's minds. And to understand the battery test, I will mention I used LG HG2s or the LG Browns, the LG Turds, whatever you want to call them, for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of these battery tests. So that is where my benchmarks are set to. If you're using other batteries other than the LG HG2s, there's no issue with that, but just understand your battery life may vary. And of course, it also depends on how much you're using it. I would consider myself an average user, maybe slightly above average. And for both of these, I was getting about 10 hours of battery use in each of them. And it was honestly too close to call. One day the drag might die, a little bit less than 10 hours and the next day the VT167 might die just a little bit over and then the next two days they would reverse rolls. So it just seems to be on my vaping style. My vaping style is obviously less than consistent to get an exact time every single day uh, for each of these devices. So I gave it around a 10 hour battery life because that seemed to be about the average based on my experience. So with all of that in mind, now that you've heard about the chip, the software, the hardware, and of course the price on these, which one is my winner? Well, honestly, I gotta give it to the drag and that's because of the price. The price has a lot to do with it. Yes, there's a ton of other factors I would factor into that decision and I can't say it's strictly based off price, but given the value you're getting from this device, and this is something I've talked about before a little bit as well, is that the price isn't what's cheapest. Just because you have the cheapest mod does not mean it's the best value for your dollar. If the mod breaks after a month, 
and you spent $10 on it, was it really worth the $10? Versus a mod that you may have spent $50 for and you've had it for three years. Again, value. What, what are you getting the most value out of? And for that reason, the value in here, while the price is low, the value feels like a DNA at a lower cost. It's a lower cost DNA chip you're getting with this. Again, just my opinion, but that's what I've found through my experience through testing both these devices for the last month or so and giving them really a fair chance at each of them, including the H Cigar, which some of you may know I'm very biased against. I do not like H Cigar. They screwed me in the past. What's in the past? I left in the past and really put it all out for this review. And I guess the only caveat I will say on this win for the drag is if you have a VT167, is it worth going out and getting the Bupu drag mod? And in that case, I will say no. There's too many similarities in here. And really, although it didn't just come down to price, that was a very big factor in deciding over these two. So if you don't have either one of them and you're looking at them both, I think the drag is the one you want to go with. If you already have a VT167, is it worth switching to the drag? I don't think it is. I think you're better keeping it as long as you're just still working fine, which I assume it is. I've been trying to break this thing for four months now. I haven't been able to break the VT167. I'm slightly disappointed in that result, but at the same time, I'm also happy because I now have a working DNA uh, H-Cigar product, which is something I couldn't say before I had this device. Anyways, that's going to end for today. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and until next time, YouTube, happy vaping.